What's going on everyone? Austin John please here and today we're going to be talking about all of the confirmed Pokemon that are going to be returning in Pokemon DLC Part 2 Expansion Pass the Crown Tundra and who else we could possibly expect. <laughs> We've seen a good amount of footage in regard to Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC 2. In addition to some promotional images and there are trailers for different countries, so on and so forth. So I was able to compile a pretty good list of all the Pokemon that we know are confirmed. I cross-referenced this with Cerebi's findings and also we're going to be comparing this to the data mine that ABC Boy reported on in regard to all of the Pokemon that were edited. If you don't know what I'm talking about in regard to the data mine, there was a bunch of information that was left over from the programmers in regard to DLC 2, but that information was kept in the DLC 1 patch, and it isn't public, but via data mining, they're able to find some things. And the specific post that I'm talking about is right here. This happened June 20th, 2020, a few months ago. Quick summary of what's going on here. With regards to the base game, there was only those 400 Pokemon. Basically, if you look at the national decks, you're going to see that there's an entry for Bulbasaur, uh, Bulbasaur's line, Charmander's line, Squirtle's line, Caterpie's line. There's no entry for Weedle. There's no entry for Pidgey. There's no entry for Nidoran. Basically, there's no entry whatsoever for the Pokemon that were not in the base game, right? And then as of this update, these Pokemon, and instead of it being blank, it looks like there was a value there, and then it was scrubbed away. It was deleted. Say, for example, if you write something on a piece of paper, and over here you have nothing written down, and over here you have something written down, but then you used whiteout, it's clear that there was something there. These are the Pokemon that were whited out of the national decks. To which I decided to take them and move them around in generation order, and everything that you're gonna see highlighted in green is a Pokemon that either I found in a trailer, I found in promotional images, or Serebi found on their website. Everything that is a blue is a mythical or legendary Pokemon that is or is not confirmed and let's start at gen 1 and we can see that the Nidoran line is here both male and female Zubat Golbat in gen 2 you have Crobat we don't have Jinx being entered but we do have Electabuzz and Magmar. We've also seen their evolutions. We have no confirmation of the Gen 1 fossils. We have seen the Gen 1 birds that are gonna be in the Dynamax adventures, and we have seen the Dragonite line in the overworld. It's weird here that there's no Jinx, but there is Electabuzz and Magmar. And I've always kind of paired up these three in my mind. Also like Scyther kind of fits into that. Just that whole, what is it, 100 and teen, 120 Pokedex of the original Kanto decks. And then looking at Gen 2, you have the babies of the three Pokemon aforementioned, and then you have the legendaries that are all confirmed in the Dynamax dens. Then when you get to Gen 3, there's a lot of entries here, and supposedly the entries for the Gen 3 starters, you know, our, our Megas from Oris, are all edited in here, but we have no confirmation that they're actually going to be appearing. We have Agron, we have Swablu, and then what's weird is we have one of the fossils confirmed, but not the other. Although it's safe to say that if we have one, we're gonna have the other. We have Absol, the Sphiel line, Relicanth. Salamance is supposedly edited, although we have no proof of him existing. We do have Metagross, and we have all of the legendaries from Gen 3. What's interesting here is we have a full set of starters, and looking ahead, these are the only starters that are actually listed. And I'm starting to think it may be possible that just like Gen 1 with Pokemon Home, we are going to have some Pokemon that are going to be transferable, but not necessarily in the game. Like, you could find the entire Charmander line, but Bulbasaur and Squirtle were actually supported from day one. If you had a way of getting them in your game, you could have had them there. But it wasn't until the Isle of Armor that you were actually able to encounter and catch them. I do believe it may be possible that we have the Gen 3 starters returning in support format, meaning you transfer them from home, but you cannot catch them or obtain them in the Crown Tundra. Moving on to Gen 4, we have 
everything already here confirmed except for Spirit Tomb and Jirachi. If you didn't know, there's a difference between legendaries and mythicals. Mythicals are usually event-only Pokemon where there might be one mythical sprinkled in here and there, like in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. The Delta episode had Deoxys, who is a mythical, but in theory, you could restart the game over and over and catch it over and over. All the legendaries confirmed, we have the Garchomp Blonde confirmed the evolution of Electabuzz and Magmar. Spirit Tomb, no idea. Its dex entry was edited. Haven't seen in anything. Gen 5. Now, we start to see four fossils here that we haven't seen anything of them in the trailer, which is weird. So it might be another situation that they're supported or these all could be items. And with these items, you're going to be able to restore them at some facility or the person on route, what is that, 5? And get these Pokemon back. Also, Audino. Uh, oh, and Genesect is also listed here, and we have no confirmation of Genesect, but Genesect's dex entry was edited. On to Gen 6, we do have confirmation of all those fossils. So it looks like they're focusing on possibly bringing back the fossils, which actually makes me think that maybe the Almanite, Kabuto, and Aerodactyls, they may be support only, or they may just be more items in order to, you know, revive those Pokemon. And all of the X and Y legendaries, sorry, just a small error on my part that is now corrected. Uh, Deontay and Volcanion are not confirmed. They are supposed to have the, the legendary tag, but not the confirmed tag. We do have Yovaltal, Xerneas, Zygarde obviously confirmed. And then on to Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, we have only the Link Guardians confirmed, and supposedly, all of the Ultra Beasts have had their dex entries edited. It did say that there's going to be over 100 returning Pokemon. As of right now, we have 78 of the 119 dex entries confirmed. So that means that there's going to be, at minimum, mm, 22 more. Quick moths. If I were to put in all of these Ultra Beasts and all of the, you know, non-mythical, non-legendary Pokemon, except for these starters and the Gen 1 fossils, that puts us at, I believe, or like just about 101, maybe 102 Pokemon, quick maths again. So, again, that's further supporting the idea that those may be supported only Pokemon, or maybe we have the Gen 1 fossils in there and only the Gen 3 starters are gonna be transfer only. Who knows? Now, also in regard to the same data mine, there was talks of the actual DEX entries. And that lists that we have the new Regis as number 894, 895, Calyrex as number 898. And we have two entries in here called Hakuba and Kokuba. Now, we don't know what these are, but it's their DEX entries 896 and 897. These are their Japan development names. And supposedly, there's also an item that's going to be able to fuse Hakuba with Calyrex and Kokuba with Calyrex for new entries, which I don't have those written down right now. And then I also think that we may have number 899 and 900 just to round out the mythicals altogether and start the next generation off at 901, which would make a lot of sense because Game Freak has been liking to do that recently. We still have no idea what Hakuba and Kokuba are. We don't know if we're going to be having all these fossils returning. It seems like a lot. That's a lot of fossils to bring back into the game. Know what I mean? Like, why are we doubling down on bringing all of them back? Is this all of them? So this is what we know as of right now. I am going to keep my eye on this and update you guys on exactly what's going on. We may get no further information until the actual release of the game. Pokemon has been very secretive about the Sword and Shield generation uh, to the fact that they didn't tell us that Pokemon are going to follow you in DLC 1. That's a selling point. How come that wasn't listed, right? But yeah, I'm going to keep you guys updated on all the Pokemon that are returning and the version differences. So whenever I have those updates, I'm going to let you guys know. And also, guaranteed guide coming at you is going to be how to get all the legendary Pokemon that are going to be in the games. I did that for Ultra Sun and Moon. We're going to be doing it again. Well, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you haven't done so, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.